Hello, and welcome back to The Coding Train. Today, I'm going to look at the hand pose model in ML5.js. This video is part of my Beginner's Guide to Machine Learning with ML5.js series. In the previous video, I looked at the body pose model. There are actually two of them. There's Blaze Pose and MoveNet. I went through all the details about them, but I'm gonna take one of the examples from the previous video. It's this one right here. Loads MoveNet, applies it to a uh, real-time video image, and I am going to swap in the hand pose model and look at what we can do when instead of tracking a series of key points on the body, you are getting detailed key points on your hand. For some inspiration about the kinds of creative applications that you might try to make with body pose tracking, hand pose tracking, and hopefully in the next video when I look at face mesh tracking, I encourage you to check out the Instagram page of the wonderful teacher, creative coder, and artist Jack B. Do. He's made a lot of demos for these models that are in ML5.js, and a lot of my teaching materials are based on the work that he's been doing in the last year. After looking at the basics of how the hand pose model works, I'm going to attempt to recreate this particular demo where you draw with your fingers only when your thumb and index finger are closed together. Once again, before I use any particular machine learning model in a project, I always like to investigate who trained that model, how that model was trained, and with what data set. For this model, the starting point is the 2019 Google Research blog post on device real-time hand tracking with MediaPipe. One thing I first noticed when reading this article is there are actually two models. One first just detects where the hand is, a bounding box for the hand. That way that image can be cropped and sent into another model, which then estimates the X, Y positions of all of the key points in the hand. Here we can see documentation of the training data. They took 30,000 real world images of hands and manually annotated 21 key points over all of them. In addition to the real world images of hands, they used synthetic data or 3D rendered models of a hand. Here we can see that by mixing both the real world images and the synthetic data, the model was able to achieve the lowest error score after being trained. The model that is in ML5 is an updated version from 2021, improved accuracy for 2D, and can actually track the key points on both hands. In the previous video, we looked at body pose, which receives as an input an image. The output is a uh, set of X, Y key points. Uh, you can estimate a Z if you want with blaze pose, and you also get a confidence score for each one of those points. Now we're going to look instead at hand pose. There aren't multiple options for hand pose in ML5. And the output is the same, a series of X, Y points with a confidence score, and you get 21 of them. The hand pose documentation includes a really nice diagram. It shows you all of the points, their index value into an array, as well as their name that you can use to access them instantly. And so here I am with the code from before. I've got a variable for video, I've got a variable for the pose model, and then an array to keep track of all of the poses that the model detects. The draw loop checks to see if there is at least one pose detected. It only ever looks at the first pose and then loops through and draws all of the key points as long as the confidence score is greater than 0.1. So I'm gonna now adapt this to work with the hand pose model. I'm gonna change the variable name from body pose to hand pose. I'm going to change the variable poses to be hands. I'll change this from pose to hand. Let's change got poses to got hands, why not? All right, I've changed all of the names of everything, but I'm still loading the body pose model. If you didn't believe that you could name variables whatever you want, now you really see it doesn't matter what we call stuff. It matters what we do. And what I want to do now is switch from calling ML5 body pose to ML5 hand pose. I'm also gonna remove the move net string. There's only one model for detecting hands in ML5 as of now. Uh-oh. I don't see anything. So what's happening? In the previous video, I did all of my debugging by console logging the results from the model anytime I click the mouse. So let's do that again. Okay, a hand was detected. 
index zero dot key points, that looks the same. Each key point has an X and a Y and a name. Aha, the key points themselves don't have individual confidence scores. There is only an overall confidence score for detecting the hand itself. So let's adapt the code according to that. So I'm gonna take out the if statement with confidence altogether. Now you can see it's tracking my hand. If I wanted to have a confidence threshold, I could do that on the hand level. Now I'm only drawing the hand if the confidence for it is greater than 0.1. So which hand is it drawing? Unlike with body pose, where I only wanted to work with the first pose that was detected, here I probably want to look at all of the hands that it's detecting. So right here, instead of just looking at hands index zero, I could add a for loop. And let's use a for of loop for every hand in the hands array or let hand of hands. If the confidence for that hand is greater than 0.1, draw all of its key points. It's also useful to note that there is a handedness property, which is either left or right. So maybe I could change the color based on whether it's guessing a left hand or a right hand. I can add an if statement to check if the handedness value is left, draw pink. Otherwise, I could check if it's right, but there's only one other option. This should be yellow, I think. Pink yellow. Okay, so you see how to draw all the key points. Hopefully your creative juices are flowing and you have all sorts of ideas of what you wanna make. Most of your ideas, I'm guessing, involve picking specific points on your hand and doing different things with them. So let's go back to that idea of drawing with your fingers when the index finger and the thumb are connected. I'm gonna go back to looking at one hand only again. Referring back to the diagram, I want the index finger tip and the thumb tip. Of course, I could just go back to that array and get index eight and index four, but I'm gonna use the name instead. So now I have two separate variables holding on to two points on the hand. Let's just draw them. Index and thumb. So we can see I have just those two points. Again, I'm just looking at whatever the first hand it detects is. What I wanna do next is determine if the index finger and the thumb are touching. I can use the distance between those two points to make a guess as to whether or not they are. Now, of course, I could do things like turn my hand like this and they're right on top of each other, but they aren't really touching. Possibly a way around that would be to use the 3D key point estimation, but I'm gonna keep it simple right now. I'll leave that as an exercise to you. In P5, I can get the distance between any two points with the dist function. And let's make a threshold, say, if that distance is less than five pixels, change the color of the dot. Wait a second, <laughs> that's if it's greater than, that's fine. Oh. I can't get five pixels is not enough. So five pixels is a bad threshold. Also, I said greater than and less than. Let's try 20 pixels. They're pink, they're yellow. Now, if I wanna draw a single dot as I move my fingers around, it would probably make sense for me to take the average position of both of those points. I can do that by adding the X's and Y's and dividing by two. Oh, and look at that. There's that average position, and it turns yellow when my fingers get close. Interestingly enough, if I make the size of that circle the distance, what happens? Now I have a circle that is always in between those fingers. Okay, but what I want to do is draw or paint with my fingers. Here is a simple mouse painting sketch in P5.js. This sketch works because I draw the background only once in setup. But in this sketch, the background is not a plain solid color, but the video itself, and I wanna keep it running continuously, which means I can't draw the video only once in setup. 
I have two options that I could pursue here. One is I could use an array and accumulate all of the tracking points into an array and always draw a continuous line between them. Another way I could approach it is by thinking of my P5 sketch output as having layers. And the way I can create a separate layer for the painting, which is different from the video, is by using create graphics. I'm gonna have a global variable called painting. When I create the canvas, I'm going to make another canvas, one that you don't see, but that's just stored in a variable called painting by calling create graphics. Now, instead of drawing this circle directly on the canvas, I'm gonna call it on the painting. All of the P5 drawing functions that you call globally, stroke, fill, circle, square, all of those functions can be called on either the main canvas that you see or any create graphics object that you create behind the scenes. However, now I don't see any of that stuff. It's being drawn on a canvas that you don't see. But if I want you to see it, I can place that layer, that canvas on top of the other one with the image function. And I'm gonna do that at the end. Image, painting, right there at zero, zero as well. And look at this. It's essentially working already. I, I kind of almost didn't expect it to do that. One thing I didn't bother to think about is whether I should draw a background on the painting at all. If I had done that in setup, like let me just draw a white background for example, because that painting layer now has a white background and it's drawn on top of the video, I don't see the video anymore. If I were to draw the background every frame, now we only see the single dot, but no video. In P5, in addition to the background function, there's also a function called clear, which basically draws a fully transparent background on a canvas. It clears all the pixels, setting them totally transparent. So clear is actually what I want to do. I just didn't actually have to because when you first call create graphics, it makes a clear canvas. Okay, but the interaction isn't really right here. I only want to draw the circle if the distance between these fingers is less than 20. All right, drawing nothing, put my fingers together. Now I am drawing my cat. Meow. <coughs> There's a few things I can do to improve this. One is it would be nice for me to actually connect the current position of the hand with the previous one, just like in this painting demo. That's done with mouse X, mouse Y, P mouse X and P mouse Y. But there's no P hand X and P hand Y. I'm gonna have to make that myself. I'll just call it P X and P Y and I'll give them an initial value of zero. Then at the end of draw, I can save the X, Y from this current frame so that when I get the new one next frame, I can connect those two with a line. And I have to do it inside this if statement here where I'm calculating that X, Y position. Now that I think about it, I should always get that X, Y position, but only paint if the distance is less than 20. So let's move a few things around. So I'm always gonna get the X, Y position. I'm always gonna store it as previous X and previous Y, but I'm only gonna paint if the distance threshold is less than 20. Still working. And now instead of a circle, I can change this to stroke. I can change this to line from P, X, P, Y to X comma Y. And I can make the stroke weight something like eight. Hmm. Ah, look what I forgot to do. If I want to change the stroke weight on that layer, the painting layer, I've got to say painting.stroke weight. There's so many more things I could do in this video, but I'm going to stop here. And I'm really excited to see what you, the viewer, might make with this ability to track hands. Here's a few prompts. One is, how might you use your other hand to change maybe the thickness of the line as well as perhaps the color? Could you design some sort of system by which you use other fingers to do that? And finally, you might be thinking, what about recognizing particular gestures like thumbs up versus thumbs down or rock, paper, scissors? 
Well, this is an interesting question. Could you use if statements to recognize if somebody is making a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on the relative position of the thumb tip and other fingers, other parts of the hand? That's one option. However, what I'm going to be doing in a later video, which is hopefully coming up soon, is looking at how we can take the output of the hand pose model and feed that into another machine learning system to do hand pose classification. Okay, if you liked this video, the next one I'm going to do is on the face mesh model in ML5. The hand pose model has 21 key points. That face model, it has a lot of points. Here's the example. I'm gonna check how many points are in there. 468. See you then.